China reports increase in COVID-19 cases and deaths raises concerns over epidemic transparency. Taiwan's Wan An Air Raid Drill prepares public shelters in case of a CCP military attack. Controversial Jinan University delegation on international student allowance sparks outrage. German cabinet passes China strategy. The Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, announced on July 6th that there were 1,968 new COVID-19 cases and 239 deaths in the country during June. This data indicates a significant rise in the death toll from the epidemic, occurring a few months after officially canceling the zero-COVID policy. The revelation has once again led the international community to question the transparency of the Chinese government regarding the true extent of the epidemic within the country. According to VOA, China implemented the zero-COVID anti-epidemic policy at the start of 2020, employing four principal measures to control the disease's spread. These measures included citywide lockdowns, mass quarantines, travel restrictions, and mandatory nucleic acid testing for all residents. In the early stages, these practices proved effective in containing the virus. However, as the pandemic progressed, the COVID-19 virus mutated rendering the extreme prevention and control measures less effective. Furthermore, these measures resulted in significant hardships and psychological trauma for the residents, leading to numerous humanitarian crises. Consequently, China's unrivaled economy suffered an unprecedented blow, since the reform and opening up policy was implemented over four decades ago. The consequences of this economic setback have yet to be fully recognized. Without any prior preparation, the Beijing government abruptly lifted the epidemic prevention and control measures under the Flexible Zero COVID policy at the end of last year, resulting in 10 deaths in less than two months. The impact of the virus has been substantial, with over a billion Chinese citizens reportedly infected and a noticeable increase in the death toll. However, due to stringent conditions set by Chinese authorities for counting deaths, the official figures have significantly underrepresented the extent of the epidemic within the country. Globally, the World Health Organization, or WHO, has reported over 761 million confirmed cases and more than 6.8 million deaths as of March 26, 2023. Notably, this data does not include information from China. Earlier this year, RFI quoted WHO Secretary General Tedros Ghebreyesus, stating that by mid-January this year, deaths worldwide had reached nearly 40,000, with more than half of those deaths occurring in China. The actual death toll within the country is believed to be significantly higher. Chinese officials resumed releasing data on COVID-19 deaths only in May and June this year. On July 6th, the Chinese CDC reported 1,968 new severe cases and 239 deaths in June. The announcement also disclosed that China had reported 12,431 valid genome sequences of new local cases of COVID-19 infection in June. All of these cases were found to be the Omicron variant, with 141 belonging to the XBB lineage variant strains. The top three strains were XBB.1.9, XBB.1.16, and XBB.1.22, respectively. When analyzed by sampling data, the share of XBB and its sub-branches gradually increased from 94.7% between May 29th and June 4th, 2023, to 96.2% between June 26th and July 2nd. This year, Taiwan's Wan'an drills simulating the situation of the CCP's air force attacking the island expanded to the public. Under the National Defense Mobilization Preparation Act, the one on exercises verify mobile combat capabilities and evacuate the streets, allowing for traffic controls and air raid siren tests to enhance national emergency response capabilities. Specifically, the one on will occur from July 24th through the 27th in four regions. The north of Taiwan is the first venue chosen by the one on for rehearsals. The exercise in this area runs from 1.30 to 2 p.m. on July 24th. The rest of the drills will be held in the south, the east, and central Taiwan, respectively, during the same period on the 25th, 26th, and 27th. 
People in 22 counties and cities of the four regions will rehearse shelter-in-place scenarios for when the island is under airstrike. According to Taiwan News, the one on drill this year requires that when the CCP Air Force arrives, drivers must immediately stop moving. They will have to follow the instructions with pedestrians to find the nearest shelter. Another difference compared to previous years is that when the sirens stop, signaling the end of the exercise, the local authorities are responsible for instructing the people to prepare the necessary things for the shelter. Where drills take place, drivers and pedestrians who fail to follow instructions and do not clear the streets could face fines ranging from $958 to $4,700. A recent release of an off-campus services notice by Jinan University in Shandong Province has stirred public anger. The declaration, specifically the section titled Living Allowance for International Students and Other Tax-Exempt Items, displayed amounts ranging from 29,000 to 30,000 yuan. This raised suspicions among netizens that the university provides a monthly living allowance of 30,000 yuan to each international student. On the afternoon of July 9th, an official from the Jinan University office responded to the Chinese media outlet Jimu News that the photo of the notice circulated online was incomplete and that the back of the document stated the actual monthly allowance to be 1,000 yuan. The university has reported this incident to the police for appropriate action. As a result, the topic, Dinan University reported to the police, trended on Weibo on the same day. Netizens questioned, Why is it so substantial, instead of just publishing the complete declaration? Is the funding related to Dinan University provided by the government or funded by taxpayers? Are there military or national security secrets associated with it that it cannot be made public? Criticism also emerged regarding the allocation of police resources, with one remarking, what a waste of police resources. Even if what they say is true, they fail to communicate it. Now they want to employ a police force to suppress public opinion. Let me tell you, if the police end up arresting and detaining individuals, there will surely be a stronger backlash from the public. Just wait and see. Detailed information would have been more credible, but they left it vague and unaddressed intentionally escalating the situation. Another individual pointed out, 1,000 yuan is a substantial amount. Aren't elderly individuals in rural areas receiving only 1 or 200 yuan per month? Besides, don't all universities disclose the number of subsidized foreign students annually? One person stated, It's not so much discontent with the Jinan University incident, but rather dissatisfaction with the study abroad policy in recent years. China has been nurturing non-native individuals for decades. In recent years, many international students have come to China, many of whom receive subsidies and invitations. We must carefully consider whether this is profitable in the long run or caters to the pursuit of so-called internationalization by universities. Some netizens expressed their disappointment, noting, It's embarrassing for the people of Shandong. Last time, Shandong University provided the best dormitories to female students paired with international students, and now they are involved in such an incident. The German cabinet has recently approved its long-awaited China strategy. After months of disagreements within the internal three-way coalition over how much to toughen Germany's stance on Asia's rising power, as reported by Reuters, the release of the passing coincides with a broader Western initiative known as de-risking which aims to reduce strategic dependencies on an assertive China, amid worries about escalating tensions in the Indo-Pacific region. According to VOA, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's government released a national security strategy in mid-June, calling China a partner, competitor, and systematic adversary. The document also accuses China of seeking to use its economic power to achieve political goals and regional hegemony thus posing a growing threat to regional stability and international security. Schultz's China strategy was initially scheduled to be released before Chinese Premier Li Tiang visited Germany for bilateral talks in late June. Still, policy differences within the government caused a delay. The Greens, who lead the China strategy led by Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, advocate a tough policy toward Beijing. Schultz's Social Democrats, on the other hand, are relatively moderate especially after Schultz's recent push for investment by Costco, the Chinese state-owned shipping company, and a container terminal in Hamburg, which has drawn more attention than any other investment. 
Annalena Baerbock's announcement of a China strategy at a NATO summit in Lithuania on July 12th will signal that we are not naive. She noted that the lesson from Russia's invasion of Ukraine is the need to reduce one-sided dependence on foreign relations. According to two sources familiar with the matter, the foreign ministry and other government ministries, including Prime Minister Schultz's office, discussed the final details of the strategy and agreed on a final text on July 13th. Foreign Minister Bell Burke and Economics Minister Robert Habeck, who belongs to the Green Party, want to stress test German companies with large operations in China to avoid becoming overly economically dependent on the country. Germany is Europe's largest investor in China, with extensive investments in various areas, including automobiles and chemicals.